This is app armor, and this is a pod. Let's see how we can bring those two things together to put some security inside our containers. We're going to get into this first by looking at app armor itself. So we're going to take a look at how it works within Kubernetes, what some of the requirements are, and even take a look at writing one of our own profiles just to block writes to the file system within inside the pod or the containers within the pod. Then we'll look at how we apply that and test it to make sure it works. And after that, we'll apply one that doesn't exist just to see what happens. I think you already probably know what happens though. One last little thing before we do though. See that little subscribe button just down there, just there? Give it a little click for us. Be greatly appreciated. We're gonna just start by looking at App Armor's documentation here really quickly, and then we'll just jump straight in and have a play around with creating a quick profile to prevent writes to the pods file system. And yeah, let's just crack on, I guess. It's right there in front of us. Let's go ahead and do it. So if you're not familiar with App Armor, it's worth having a look into it because this is a separate thing to Kubernetes. It's part of the Linux kernel. It's a security module, as it says here, that supplements the standard Linux user and group based permissions to confine programs to a limited set of resources. It's a little bit like SE Linux, if that helps. And if it doesn't, here's a tiny bit of a description. So App Armor basically allows an app to be restricted to doing certain things, such as writing to a particular directory. We write profiles that are enforced or allowed to complain. So complain mode basically just complains about it. It just says, oh, you're not supposed to be doing that. Why are you doing that? Enforcing stops these things happening. So complain will allow it to happen. Enforce will not. App Armor is mainly found in Ubuntu and Debian, well, Debian-based systems on the whole, and OpenSUSE. Yes, it is SUSE. It's SUSE. See? And SE Linux is generally found in Red Hat-based operating systems. So we don't have a Red Hat based operating system running in our cluster, which is why I'm covering App Armor. But SE Linux, I covered it in the security context video. Very briefly, you know, I said how you can apply labels and things like that, but I won't be covering it because I don't have the operating system for it at the moment. Well, I do have an operating system for it. I just don't have the cluster with it running on and I'm not gonna be setting one up just yet, I'm afraid. So that's basically all App Armor is. So what do we want to do? We actually want to create a profile. We want to deploy a pod and then we want to check to make sure it's using that profile and that it actually works. So we've got some before we begins here. There's make sure you're on Kubernetes is at least 1.4. If you're on 1.4, you're doing this wrong. Go away, go to this video right now, upgrade your cluster right now and then come back. You need to be on 126, 127, or 128 at the minimum. 128 is the current version, and the two previous ones are the ones supported. So yeah, don't be on 1.4. I'm surprised this doc actually says that. I mean, technically it's correct because you have to be on a minimum of 1.4, but I mean, come on, come on. Who's running 1.4, right? App Armor has to be enabled on the at the kernel level. It's very unlikely it won't be if you're using something like Ubuntu. And if you're following along with this series, it definitely will be. But if you want to check, you can run this command. I'll jump over to my terminal and show you that working. We can just paste that command in. So I've got my three control planes here and my three worker nodes. So I'll just drop that in here. And you can see I get a Y back. So yes, for all of those and the same for the workers. And to be honest, it's the workers it matters on anyway. So it doesn't look like I'm able to paste it in here. Well, let's copy it again, paste it. There we go. So it matters on these because the profiles need to be enabled on the nodes you are working on. So that's enabled. Next, we need to make sure the container runtime supports App Armor, which container D does. So that's fine. We are happy to move on with that and that the profile is loaded. So one way of checking is to cut out the profiles, as you can see here. So we can drop those in and we've got a bunch here so we can continue. And that's pretty much everything. If you want more details on loading profiles onto nodes, see setting up nodes with profiles, which is this bit here. Let's just quickly look at that. So over here, we'll see that there is ways of doing it via daemon sets. There is a node additionalization time. So you can use some scripts like Ansible or anything else to enable the profile straight away on it. You can copy profiles to each node and load them as we're going to do in the example. There's a few different ways and you can actually use something called the security profiles operator, which I have here. And this also allows you to enable things via SE Linux or SecComp, which is the next video or App Armor. There's it's still quite early for this in the scheme of things. I haven't used this directly myself, but you can see it's all in alpha at the moment. So this is why I haven't really jumped into it too much at the moment. It deploys a daemon set. You get one on each node. You deploy some custom resource definitions and that will deploy the profiles to the nodes. It's pretty straightforward stuff. I imagine those need privileges that will enable them to interact directly with the node rather than just being pods that run in a secure manner. So there's a few issues that I have around that, but as long as they're locked down well enough and they're secured well enough, then I mean, there is some demos here that have been done and there's a pretty in-depth documentation here on how to use it so if you want to look at this by all means do again linky in the description and yeah 
that's pretty much all I'm going to say about setting up and making sure everything's ready. Let's get started with actually setting up a profile though. So we've got this profile here, K8S App Armor, example deny right. And without getting into how to write profiles right now, what, what I'm going to tell you is this, it is denying the ability to write all files. That is all this is doing. So if you try and create a file inside a pod, it will fail if the profile is enabled. So if you want to create it, you can just copy this section here. In fact, you can copy all of that. You don't need it on each node. I mean, you can do it that way if you want to, but you can just copy this and we will drop that onto the worker node. So I'll press enter there. This will create one on the fly that hasn't quite copied right. I think is that quote on the end. So if we do that, there we go. And now I can do app armor status. And if I press enter there, we'll see we've got a new profile loaded here called K8S app armor example deny right. And that's pretty much it. Now this won't be persistent. Okay. So if I reboot the nodes, this will disappear. This is just a quick way of throwing them in. Ideally you'd create some files and actually do them properly yourself. And if I do that cat command again, we should see it in here now as well. And there it is. You want to create these profiles properly. And that's the profile created. And that's on all the worker nodes. We could do it on the control plane nodes if we want, but I'm not deploying any pods on the control plane node that need it right now. So I won't do that. But realistically, this isn't how you want to be doing it. This is just the example. Realistically, what you need to do is follow some of these guides here. So adding them at node initialization time or doing it through a daemon set or using that operator that I mentioned. So moving along, we've got the profile in place now. We can go ahead and create the pod so I'll just grab this and then we'll have a quick walk through it so I'll jump over to the IDE I'll create a new file we'll call this app armor.yaml paste that in and let's have a look we've got a pod we've got some metadata that's all fine we know about all this and I'm going to add a namespace so let's add it into our learning namespace and then let's have a look at the annotation that we've set. So all this is doing is running BusyBox. I'm going to change that to 136. And it's just going to start a shell up that says, hello, App Armor, and then sleep for an hour. That's literally all this is going to do. But it's going to allow us to execute some commands. And we can just execute commands in shells using the kubectl execute command. And we want to create a file. The problem is we're going to have this in place. Now, what this is, it's an annotation. It's quite a mouthful. It's container.apparmor.security.beta.kubernetes.io forward slash the name of the container. So this name here. And then localhost because the profile is on the node. And then the name of the profile itself. If I apply that now, so if we do QCTL, apply hyphen F, and then we do workloads, extras, and then app armor, I'm gonna go ahead and apply that. It will get created. And now all I need to do is just check to make sure that's enabled and that's worked. And all we need to do for that is jump back over to here and we should have a command in here. There's a, cube, there's a kubectl events command you can run and you can do this and you'll get the information back. I mean, this is the same with Docker. So I suspect this here, this particular doc has not been updated since Docker was being used in Kubernetes and it probably worked for that. But if I run that now, I won't get this. Maybe it's a container D thing. Maybe it's just old docs. I mean, it's still talking about 1.4. So I suspect old docs is probably the case. And yeah, we can run this command here. So I'll go ahead and grab that. We'll do namespace on that too. And all this is going to do is check to see if it's enabled. So if I hit enter on that, we can see the profile being enforced. So to check that actually works, I can just do touch and then we'll try and create a file called test in the temp directory. And if I do that, I get permission denied. And the reason being, well, we've denied any rights. So that's working. That's great. So I'm going to delete that. What happens if we try and add something that doesn't exist. So if I just change this to allow, for example, what will we see? Will it still run and just not enable the profile or will it fail to run the pod altogether? I can tell you now while it's deleting, it's going to fail to run the pod altogether, but I'll show you just for the sake of brevity. So let me go ahead and reapply that now. And we will do just, let's just describe that straight away. And we can see here that it's failed to get a container spec opt, failed to generate app armor spec opt, app armor profile not found. And it's the one that I've just changed it to. So the allow right. So that's it. That's how we enable profiles on Kubernetes with App Armor. And that's it. That's everything you need to know about App Armor right now. So as you saw, we just write profiles, we apply it via an annotation, and that's pretty much it. In the next video, we're going to take a look a little bit further in security using sec comp profiles, which we've kind of touched on in some of the previous videos. But this time we're going to grab a few of the profiles from the examples on the website. And then we're going to take a look at how we apply them to a pod and what happens when we do. So this is about blocking syscalls or allowing certain syscalls. And we'll get into that further in the next video.